Hello and welcome to this tutorial. This is the first programming tutorial of this YouTube channel. With this video I will help you building your agent based simulations using the Python Mesa library. Last winter I did a COVID-19 spread simulation using the Python Mesa library. When I was using it I found very few helpful content or tutorials about it so I decided to make this video explaining the key concepts to work with this library so we can make our own simulations and yes it took me almost a year until I have a free slot to do it you can see the simulation I did in my blog and you can find there the code repository as well this is the UI where you have some sliders to adjust simulation parameters and well the charts to show you the data the code is on this link and you can also see the results post by clicking here and find a small video showing the simulation running. Now let's open my Visual Studio code. Here I have three Python files, the agent model and the server. The code on the three files is the base code we can find in the Python Mesa library and it is in the documentation tutorial. The documentation link is on the video description, feel free to read it. Well, what is the Mesa library? The Mesa library allows us to build agent-based models, where we can define the behaviors of each agent and the interaction between agents as well. The library is based on two classes, model and agent. A model can have multiple agents and it is the simulation environment. There we can specify the type of grid we want to use according to our needs, as we can see well, later on in this video. The two classes implement the step method. There is a very important method. Time in most agent-based models moves in steps, sometimes also called ticks. At each step of the model, one or more of the agents, usually all of them, are activated and take their own step, changing internally or interacting with another agent or the environment. The model step updates the simulation state, so every time we execute a model step, we should execute the step for all the agents we want to activate. The Mesa library also provides a way of visualizing the simulation. It is based on the JavaScript Tornado library, so we build a small local web server to see the interactions between the agents. Now let's get into the code. To install the Mesa library, run the pip install Mesa command on your command line. I already have uh, the Mesa library installed on my Python environment, so you can uh, see my pip list here and the version uh, I'm using. So let's start changing the base code I got from the Mesa documentation. I have three files open. The first one, the agent.py. This one is where we define the agent data structure. In this example, we have here the class money agent, which inherits from the Mesa library agent class. The dunder init method calls the super method to initialize the super class and also defines the wealth instance variable. This class represents an agent that has some money. Each and every agent we create from this class will have one unit of money, here designated as wealth. The goal of um, our simulation is to randomly distribute each agent wealth with one agent who passes in the same cell in a given step. Then we can run the experiment and observe how the simulation society changes its wealthiness if everyone shares its money. If we look at the class methods, we can see four. The first one, the vendor in it, then the step. Here, we move the agent by calling its own move method, and then if we have money or wealth, we share it through the give underscore money method. This method uses some built-in mazes model methods to achieve its goal. We have this get underscore cell underscore list underscore contents method, 
from the grid class to retrieve the agents that are in the same cell. If we go to the model.py file and control click on the multigrid import and now scrolling to the grid class declaration we can see the list of methods we can use. We pass the agent's current position as the argument of the get underscore cell underscore list underscore contents method and we pass it inside a list. Please note, we have access to the model instance variables as we are sorting the model using the Mesa agent class under init method, our super class. Here we pass the model and if we control click on it, we can see its assignment. Same occurs to the post instance variable that is set when we put an agent into the model's grid, as we will see later on. Again, inside our give underscore money method, after finding um, another agent in the same cell, we randomly choose one agent and then we give him one unit of wealth. We add the value to the other agent's wealth instance variable and of course we subtract same amount from our current agent's wealth. Please note we are uh, checking if the cellmate's list length is greater than one to make sure the cell has our agent and at least one more. However, we are not checking here if the agent we are randomly picking is our current agent. We can check it using its unique ID instance variable if you want to check it. Finally, we have the move method. Here we are using the Mesa grids get underscore neighbor root method to return the possible cells we have available to which our agent can move. We can go to the grid class declaration to check the method parameters. By emitting the radius argument, we are using the default value of 1. So, in our simulation, the agents are moving one cell each time we do a step in the simulation. And finally, we choose a random cell in which we want to place our agent and use the move underscore agent method to actually change the agent's position. Now, looking into the model.py file, we have a class money model that inherits from the Mesa models class. The money model class has two declared methods, the dunder in it and the step. In the first one, we define and create some important instance variables. Firstly, we receive the hand parameter specifying the number of agents which will be added to the simulations model. And then we receive the width and height of the grid. Now we define the grid type. In this example, we are using Maze's multigrid class to declare the simulations grid. We pass the width and height, and the last parameter we pass to the multigrid under init method is a boolean to treat the grid as a torus or not. Schedule instance variable is where we define the type of activation we want for our simulation. Opening its declaration, we can see its description. Let's go to the part where we can create and add agents to the simulation model. Here, we declare a for loop according to the number of agents we receive as an argument to the model creation. On each iteration, we create a money agent and we add it to the schedule instance variable. If we control click in the random activation class, we can see its details. If we now open its superclass named base scheduler, we can see the available methods. The add method adds an agent to the scheduler but it requires the agent to have a step method. If you recall, we defined the step method on our agent.py file, so we are good to go. Now that we have our agent in the scheduler so we can activate it during the simulation run, we will get a random x and y position from the grid and put agent there using the grids place underscore agent method. The step method for now only calls the scheduler step method where we randomly activate our agents by calling their own step method. If we control click in the random activation class we can see its step method that calls the agent step method. 
Later, we will change the model step method a little bit. Now, the last file we have here is the server.py. Here we have the Mesa visualization setup that creates a small local server to display the simulation on a web page. We define an agent portrayal function to set agents portrayal. Uh, we can have different conditions here, of course. For now, we are changing the agent's portrayal according to its wealth value. If it has wealth, we see the agent as a green circle. If it does not have wealth, it will be a red circle with a smaller radius. The layer key in the portrayal dictionary is a layer as we have them on Photoshop. The layer 1 overlaps layer 0. So, if you have an agent with wealth and one without wealth in the same cell, we will see a green circle with a red circle on top of it. We then use the function uh, in our grid declaration. If we control click the canvas grid class, uh, we can see its description. So now we build a server with the modular server class where we pass the simulation model, the array of canvas we uh, want to display, in this case is only the grid, the name for the simulation and parameters for the model under init method, in this case our money model. Finally, we set the server port instance variable and launch the server. So, if I run this server.py file, we can see our simulation. To run it, we press the start button on top right corner or the step button to only advance one step each time. However, if you try to run the simulation, an error appears in the Visual Studio Code's terminal. We need to define an instance variable in our model class named running to allow the simulation to start and stop according to its value. We need to add another instance variable called running and for now we will set it as true then we can have some conditions to stop the simulation run when you get let's say 10 or 20 agents that do not have wealth greater than zero you can have that kind of conditions in the curves so as soon as we save the code is automatically reload and we have a new browser tab let's close the last one and now if we click start we can see something happening if we stop this is the case where we have an agent on layer 0 and an agent on a layer 1 and if you look to uh, the visual studio code terminal now we do not have any Error. So this is the base to have your simulation running and now we can change the code and make some funny things with it.